Hello my dear friends, welcome to Medico Mallu. This day we are going to discuss a small simple topic myasthenia gravis from general medicine. Myasthenia gravis is an autoimmune condition where there is increased production of antibodies, autoantibodies against this acetylcholine receptors and that is the chief cause. And where is this affecting? It is in the neuromuscular junction. There are many acetylcholine neurotransmitters in the end of this neuron and it is released into the synapse and in the postsynaptic region there is acetylcholine enzyme receptors. These are the acetylcholine enzyme receptors. What this acetylcholine does? This acetylcholine neurotransmitter release gives the signal for the skeletal muscle to contract and that helps the voluntary muscle movement. So the problem is there is acetylcholine receptor antibodies. These antibodies bind to this acetylcholine receptors and blocks many such receptors and thus the action or activity of this acetylcholine neurotransmitter as a result decreases and thus there is reduced movement of this voluntary muscle. This condition myasthenia gravis in 20% of the patients are seen at the onset of the childhood or in the adolescent stage itself. The hallmark is the fatigable weakness. Why it is called fatigable weakness? In the morning, the patient is having a very healthy, strong contractions and a voluntary muscle action. But towards the evening, the muscle gets fatigued and as a result, the weakness developed. Why? Because the acetylcholine neurotransmission is not taking properly. As a result, the weakness develops towards the evening and that even by the fatigue of the muscles. And that's why it is called as the hallmark of this disease. The clinical features are mainly ptosis or the ophthalmoplegia, which are asymmetric. The ptosis or the ophthalmoplegia are seen as the first symptom. Why? Because the muscles of this eye, that is the extraocular muscles, are very weak. So they get more easily fatigued than any other muscles in the body. As a result, there develops the stosis and other eye signs, like drooping of these eyelids. Other sign is the diplopia. On sustained gaze or on continuous reading, there is diplopia due to this same extraocular muscle weaknesses. Another thing is that Ask the patient to tightly close his eyes for some time, but after a few minutes, the cornea is exposed. Why? Because this orbicularis oculi, which keeps the eyelid closed, cannot sustain the contraction for a long period of time. So as a result, the cornea is slightly exposed. We have asked the patient to tightly close his eyes for a long time, but after a few minutes, the patient is peeping as he cannot close his eyelids for much more time. While the disease progresses, there is much more weakness in some other areas too. There is bulbar palsy or limb girdle palsy within two years of time. You know that the bulbar palsy is due to the lesion in the nerves supplying the larynx and the pharynx. So as a result in the bulbar palsy, there is difficulty in the swallowing, in chewing, etc. and also there will be nasal and slurred speech and as the disease progresses there is proximal limb weakness. Towards the end of the disease there can be respiratory muscle weakness and that we call as myasthenia crisis and that we can see later. And as I've told you before this myasthenia gravis is an autoimmune condition so it may be associated with some other autoimmune diseases like thyroid disorders SLE, rheumatoid arthritis, diabetes mellitus, etc. So what is this myasthenia crisis? It is respiratory muscle weakness. So here we have to ensure a good cardiorespiratory monitoring and a support. The thing is that we have to differentiate this myasthenia crisis from the cholinergic crisis where this cholinergic crisis is due to overdose of acetylcholinesterase inhibitors that we have to see. Acetylcholine is broken down into choline and acetate by this cholinesterase enzyme. This anticholinesterase inhibits this cholinesterase enzyme and 
prevents the breakdown of acetylcholine into choline and acetate and increases the concentration of this acetylcholine. And that's what we are seeing in cholinergic rises, which is just opposite to the cause in the myasthenia, but having a similar effect in the respiratory muscle. So that we have to differentiate with each other. How? In cholinergic crisis, there is predominance of the cholinergic symptoms. The cholinergic symptoms are increased salivation, increased urination, increased lacrimation, increased defecation. For our knowledge, we must know anticholinergic symptoms. Anticholinergic symptoms can be studied with a mnemonic like red as a beet due to flushing, dry as a bone due to dry mouth, blind as a bat, there is dilated pupil so we cannot see, hot as a hair, there is no sweating and the person is like much hot. It can also be said like the person can't pee, can't see, can't spit and can't shit. This is just opposite to the cholinergic crisis where the patient has got her increased urination and the patient will be having increased lacrimation where is increased salivation and increased defecation and these are this anticholinergic symptoms just opposite to the cholinergic crisis the second test to differentiate it from the cholinergic crisis is hydrophonium challenge test that we can see later so the treatment is give good cardiorespiratory support and also iv immunoglobulin or plasma pheresis has to be given Next, one more term, transitory neonatal myasthenia. This is seen in infants born to myasthenia mothers. There is weakness of the skeletal muscles or, or the voluntary muscles. So as a result, there is difficulty in feeding, there is weak cry, there is hypotonia, there is lack of facial expression and there is respiratory insufficiency. And that is this transitory neonatal myasthenia seen in infants born to myasthenia mothers. Next, the investigations to confirm the myasthenia gravis. The first test we have to do if we are suspicious of this myasthenia gravis is this hydrophonium challenge test. What is this hydrophonium? Hydrophonium is again anticholinesterases. That is, if you are giving this hydrophonium, it inhibits the cholinesterase enzymes and increases the concentration of this acetylcholine neurotransmitter. So we are giving around 0.1 to 0.2 milligram per kilogram of hydrophonium repeated every minute to a maximum of 5 mg and this effects within 10 seconds may last to 120 seconds. What are the results? There is increased concentration of the acetylcholine even for a transient period of time. So there is transient resolution of this clinical science that is the patient regains the strength of its skeletal as well as the voluntary muscles at least for a few minutes of time and this is the positive result in the hydrophonium challenge test and that confirms this disease as myasthenia gravis but this test is not used in infants as there is risk of arrhythmias and also in serology we can see there is increased concentration or titers of this acetylcholine receptor antibodies then how we are going to tackle the situation? The treatment options can be like, first of all, either we can destroy this acetylcholine receptor autoantibodies, or the second option is increasing this concentration of this acetylcholine receptors. The number of the acetylcholine receptors we have to increase. Or third option, which is the most feasible option is increasing the concentration of this acetylcholine neurotransmitters in spite of this decreased acetylcholine receptors and in the presence of this acetylcholine receptor antibodies. We are giving cholinesterase inhibitors pyridostigmine around 1 to 7 mg per kilogram per day in 4 divided doses so as a result the destruction of this acetylcholine by this cholinesterase enzyme decreases is prevented and as a result there is increased concentration of the acetylcholine by giving this pyridostigmine. Other options are giving prednisolone like steroids. They are immunosuppressants and decreases this autoantibodies circulating in the body. Other options of steroid sparing drugs are azathioprine, cyclosporin, cyclophosphamide. And another option is thymectomy. The thymus in children 
are the centers of the maturation of this antibodies especially this auto antibodies so by removing this thymus we can reduce the number or the quantity of this auto antibodies circulating in the body and improve the disease and this is the end of the topic the time for action is now it's never too late to do something if you want to do something for tomorrow then do it today itself if you are going to do something for today then do it now itself thank you for watching this video and this is your medical melu please like share and subscribe Thank you.